God of Islam himself corrupted Satan and made him an enemy to humanity. Surah Al-A'raf in verse 16 says that Satan was corrupted and made the deceiver by Allah. Why? Because he loved to create a problem maker for people, especially for those who would oppose him. Isn't it strange? This God is then called compassionate in every chapter of the Quran. The God of Christian is so different. He did not corrupt Satan. Satan himself misused his freedom of choice, rebelled against God, and became the cause of sin and lawlessness in the world. God is against Satan in every aspect and desires to release people, even his enemies, from the hands of Satan. The eleventh difference between the God of Islam and the God of Christianity is that the God of Islam uses demons to spread Islam. Surah Al-Jinn in verses 1 to 13 says that Allah uses demons to spread Islam. The book of Muhammad's life story says in pages 106 and 107 that he was not sure whether the first chapter, Surah Al-Alaq of the Quran, was inspired in him by Satan or Allah. The reason that the God of Islam uses demons in his mission is because he carries the attributes of a pagan god. Only in paganism are demons trusted. The true god cannot walk hand in hand with demons for the spread of his religion. So you see that Islamic culture is hard to separate from pagan culture. Pagan culture and beliefs have become part of the Quran, a book that is called holy and heavenly. In the Quran we read that demons are even servants to prophets. The God of Christians not only does not use demons in spreading his words, but frees people from demons and heals them. God is holy, just, and righteous, and knows that demons spread injustice, and they never speak the message of truth. The twelfth difference between the God of Islam and the God of Christianity is that the God of Islam leaves his righteous followers uncertain about their future. The Quran in Surah Maryam Verse 68 says that righteous Muslims are taken to hell immediately after they die and they will wait there with the evil ones for the judgment day. This has created great fear among committed Muslims, including Muhammad, and they are unsure whether they will be able to pass the judgment. This spiritual fear of uncertainty has torn the hearts of committed Muslims and none of them has a sure response to the question if they'll be saved or not. The response is, only Allah knows. But the righteous Christians will go to God in heaven immediately after they die. The question of life or death for Christian is solved in this life. You enter the kingdom of eternal life during your lifetime on earth if you choose to follow Jesus, who is alive and in heaven. If you do, you will pass the judgment, never be judged in the afterlife you will directly be taken to heaven. 
The 13th difference between the God of Islam and the God of Christianity is that the God of Islam is not accessible in this world. In Islam, there is no access to God's kingdom in this world. Since God is not accessible, His kingdom also is not accessible. In daily life, Muslims normally say that God is with them. But this is against the doctrine of the Quran and Islam, which believe that God does not reveal Himself. However, the God of Christian is the revealing and accessible God. He has revealed Himself in Jesus Christ to save and unite you with Him so, so that you can have eternal relationship with Him. After you allow Him to save you in the name of Jesus, you will belong to Him forever and nothing will be able to separate you from Him. The 14th difference between the God of Islam and the God of Christianity is that the God of Islam has a hiddenish heaven. I gave you all this reason so that you may become encouraged to read the Gospel of Jesus Christ yourself and see the truth with your own eyes. Thank you so much for spending time with me.